It's mm -hmm. like somebody who, you know, is on a whiteboard and they're drawing everything out and they're outlining everything and they are super excited about all the things they're dreaming about. And then they step back and they're like, they're overwhelmed with the idea of like making that a reality. They mm -hmm. don't know where to start. They don't know like, how do I like, you know, create this like product? How do I do this service? How do I, you know, do this job or do that? Mm -hmm. And like, that's where a lot of people get stuck is that like they are, uh, they get so overwhelmed with the uh, with the the possibility that they are that they that they will shelve it that they will shelve essentially their happiness the thing that they want to go after the yeah. thing they want to chase the, the thing that gives them joy mm -hmm. um, rather than the possibility of them trying it and it not working out. Welcome to Sheila's Take, your go-to podcast for thoughtful insights on love, faith, health fitness, relationships, and navigating today's challenges through a spiritual perspective. Join me, Sheila Dunbar, as we explore various aspects of life with a mindful and godly approach. Tune in for engaging discussions on all things meaningful and transformative. Welcome to Sheila's Take, the podcast where I dive into stories and experiences of incredible individuals who are making a difference in the world. Today, I have the pleasure of hosting Jonathan Dumas, a career transition coach, organizational psychologist, and speaker. Jonathan is on a mission to empower individuals and groups to own their stories, unleash their skills, and cultivate workplaces where they truly thrive. With a unique approach that combines humor and curiosity, Jonathan challenges audiences to reconsider their biases and preconceived notions about how they are supposed to be. Get ready to have some challenging yet enlightening conversations as Jonathan shares his insights on joy, authenticity, community, and equity in our careers. So sit back, relax, and prepare for at least one big aha moment with our incredible guest, Jonathan Dumas. Hi, Jonathan, how are you? Welcome. Yes, thank you so much for having me and for the wonderful intro. Again, I want to thank you, but uh, let, let's jump right into uh, uh, the inter this interview. Um, now, you mentioned the importance of joy, authenticity, and community and equity mm -hmm. in our careers. How have, how have these values shaped your own career and your mm -hmm. career journey? Yeah, I so that's a fantastic question, and I hope you like the scenic route for for questions. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yes. I don't mind so, the scenic route. <laughs> there we go. So I I, I think I, I think for me, I wasn't able to like explicitly name uh, my values because those are my values: community, joy, authenticity, mm -hmm. and equity. Those are a part of who I am, and, and it's it's it took me a long time to get there. Um, I think a, a good portion of my life, I. I'm the oldest in my family, um, mm -hmm. of siblings. I'm the first in my family to go to college. I'm the first to do a lot of things uh, in my life, like that golden boy, you know, child syndrome. Okay. Um, and a, a good portion of my life, a lot of the things were told what I was going to do. You know, my grandma, she wanted me to be a pastor all my life. <laughs> my great grandmother, God rest her soul. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, you know, my mom told me I was going to be a lawyer, um, I had people, you know, going to school. It's just like, oh, you're so smart. You do this, you do this, you do this. And so mm -hmm. it wasn't until, you know, I'm in my 30s now. And uh, me, you know, finally wanting to make decisions for myself, deciding what I wanted for my life, what I wanted in my career, what I wanted to do, until I finally asked the question, um, what is Jonathan about? Right. Um, Ooh, who is Jonathan? Question. Yeah. And what do I value? And, and it really came down to community. If I'm not with people I want to do amazing things with or just be with or talk to or whatever, then it's really hard for me to be invested in whatever. Even if I care about what we're working on, it's really hard for me to be invested in it if I if I don't feel like I'm in a community of, of people or folks, one, that look like me, other Black folks, but two, um, uh, people that actually care about other people, people that desire to be in community rather mm -hmm. than just like an individual. Um, joy, it's like I grew up laughing. My family, we get together, we just chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. So I think, you know, <laughs> just as uh, just as often as I could be serious and like, mm -hmm. you know, have that. Um, I love, love, love to laugh and like have like a, you know, a foundational, um, I don't know, 
soul satisfying like chuckle you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um and then when i think about uh equity and authenticity i think both of those go hand in hand i, I mean i've always been one my mom raised uh folks of like you don't take advantage of people like you're not a bully you don't do that that's not right. what we do mm -hmm. um you stand up to the bully you you invite people in you care for people and i think when i think about equity um and even um in my career, like some of the things that I've experienced, but also witnessed, um, equity doesn't always exist, uh, whether it's um, for pay, um, whether it's opportunity, promotions, yeah. so on and so forth. And so it's really important to me that um, in my life that I think take an equitable approach of uh, just because, you know, somebody else gets something doesn't mean, you know, I'm not going to be able to get something, you know, mm -hmm. I operate out of abundance now. And so like, if there is somebody who doesn't have anything, you know, then I want to make sure that they get all the support and uh, care that they need to get to where they need to go. Um, and so that they're thriving. And then authenticity is just like, if I can't show up and be my authentic self, you know, whatever, you know, I just started my lock journey. So <laughs> I'm having a weird hair day uh, today, but you know, it's, 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 it, you know, I, I just want to be able to show up um, as me, you know, right. and, um, and I think that that's really, really important to me. Um, and I'm always striving striving, and trying to understand like who is Jonathan? And that's a ongoing question, ongoing journey. So those are kind of like how they show up in my life, but um, my life is intertwined with my work. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. So <laughs> that's uh, so, the scenic route you <laughs> So are you, are you still trying to uh, find out who Jonathan is or are you kind of at a point where you, 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 you know, but you don't know and you're still looking mm. or? Where yeah, are you no, at right now? That's a great question. I, I mean, I'm significantly closer. I think that, um, as I mentioned before, I I feel like I'm talking in codes. I, I'll just be, I'll just open all up because that, that's authenticity. I'm warming up, Sheila. So I think that there's a, a good portion of my life that I was the only Black person in a lot of the mm -hmm. spaces that I occupied. And so, um, and so like, I was told you're one of the good ones. I was told, you know, oh, don't be like them or whatever, or you know, don't be like the other black folks or whatever. And so like, I internalize that. And wow. all of a sudden, like I'm internalizing this anti-blackness of like, I am special. I'm the exception. Um, and I didn't realize like how, what that was doing, not only to how I viewed um, my folks, uh, my community, the people that like truly, truly love me mm -hmm. and care about me. Um, uh, because when white people hurt my feelings, I always ran back to black folks, you know? Um, yeah. uh, but, but, I didn't know what that was doing to my self-image. I didn't know what that was doing to how I looked at myself in the mirror. Um, and so uh, there was always this feeling of not being enough, uh, of not being able to catch up, not being able to be successful, all these different things, because I was comparing myself to an image and a thing that that was just created. I don't know who, I don't know. I, I can't be, you know, some white dude named Steve <laughs> who grew up in the suburbs. Like that wasn't my story. Right, um, right. And so to answer your question, I think what I have, how I have um, grown in myself and like an understanding of who Jonathan is and like on this search and of self-discovery is like, I am okay with like continuously learning about who I am, right? Like I love my black skin. I love being mm -hmm. my, you know, six two um slender self I love like you know all the aches and pains I get when I'm getting up now because oh. I'm getting older and whatnot um I love my quirky little laugh I love how my you know neurodivergent brain thinks I I'm just like love learning to love like who who I am yeah. um without the world telling me um uh or these ideas of like what I'm supposed to be and I think right. that the I'm working on every day doing that, um, like more and more. So I wouldn't say that I'm a hundred percent there, but you know, mm -hmm. I would say, I would say that I'm, I'm on my way, but I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the journey. You're, you're, you're getting comfortable, um, in your skin. Yes. And, you're, yes, you're yes, yes. and getting comfortable with yourself. I, I can, I can totally, I can definitely understand that. And, mm. um, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little ways older. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that term. I'm I'm a little ways older than you. Yeah, yeah you're on the journey. You you're a little bit further down. That's all. I'm yeah, a little, fur a little yes, bit further down, that. uh, the journey. But you know, I I can definitely understand that because I'm going through the last year. I went through a, a, a I feel like um a transformation health wise um mm. um 
the way I look at things, uh, ev everything. Uh, uh, and I'm rediscovering so many new things about myself, mm. you know? Um, so I think that journey, I don't think that journey ever ends. Yeah, I agree. I think as long as you're alive, you're always going to be discovering new things. And as you get older, um, the things that you, uh, the things that, you know, you were, were interested in the past or things that, you know, things are always going to come um, into your life and you're going to learn new things. And, and, and so you're constantly on that journey. Mm -hmm. I, again, I don't think that journey ever ends. So you you constantly yeah. learning new things about yourself, and, and I'm telling you, I yeah. I've learned there were so many things that I learned in this past year about myself, um, that I'm like, wow, I can do this, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I, 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 my I started working out. I'm I'm not you know, and I'm like, whoa, I can do this at my yes. I can go to the gym and I can hang with the I can hang with the with the twenties and the thirty year olds. I I can do that now, you yes. know. But yes. I didn't think I could in the past because so that's something new I, I found out about myself. So mm. definitely, um, you are an organizational psychologist, right? Yes. What is that? Yeah, I know. What I is that? <laughs> <laughs> I get this. I get so it's funny because nobody will outright ask me. They'll just assume that I'm just like you know. They start telling me their problems. Like oh, all they heard was psychologist. Psychology. I'm like no, 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 no. So um, an organizational psychologist. Uh, basically, I study social behavior in a work setting. So um, mm. I do you know analysis uh, trainings, um, all that stuff on how people function in work. And wow. I've always been fascinated about work and how, you know, why do we work? Um, what makes people excited? What pay makes people not excited? Um, and it all started, you know, and it, what pushed me to get a degree in this, because I didn't even know this field existed, was from my own um, work experience. I had a very, you know, toxic uh, first job out of college. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that like, just like, I was so curious about was like, I don't understand how so many people come in just like super excited and, and all these people leave early. I saw people in this job. Um, some of them uh, had to go get therapy because of the way that they were treated wow. um, in the work hmm. environment. Um, and still to this day have like PTSD I know of. Um, it's just like the amount, incredible amount of harm uh, that like employers can cause. And so I just, wanted to study it because I'm like there has to be a better way to do this like this can't just be the way that work has to be like um and uh, I discovered that there is like there there absolutely is um and uh yeah that's that's what it is and I and I study it I love it um and I believe that like work doesn't have to be miserable doesn't have to be sad it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be like soul sucking like you can find joy in yeah. what you do um and it's not all rainbow sunshine and, you know, unicorns or whatever. Uh, I think that there is a, there is a blend, right. Of, 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 of things that are hard, challenging, mm -hmm. um, um, that you're pushed that make you think that make you want to grow, but it shouldn't impact every other facet of your life when you're trying to do that. Right. Um, and if you find a place where you're, you know, 70% super happy and super excited about your job, like 70% mm -hmm. of the time, you have landed in like a very, very good place. Because there's, I run into so many people that absolutely do not like what they do, that they are, they show up because, you know, they don't want to get fired. <laughs> they don't want to get fired. They, they, they want a paycheck. paycheck. Yes, they just want to, they just need a, they just need a yeah. paycheck. And I think that that is, that's unfortunate. Like it's it's really unfortunate that we live in a society where like we are stuck and doomed to just live to work rather than um uh or excuse me like working to live like that's mm -hmm. we're not able to like enjoy life and I remember having a conversation with my uncle um a few years ago and uh, this was right before I started my own I went off on my own business and I was telling him um yeah he's like seventy ish years old mm -hmm. right now and he was I was telling him like I don't want to like wait to like live life like I don't want to wait to yeah. travel I don't want to do all that and he's like well you know if you work hard now you can you can do that but there's no guarantee that I'll, I'll make it to 65 or even you know 55 yeah and so yeah. why would I wait 30 
40 years to like enjoy life when I can do that now. And so I think when I talk about like career, career joy, um, living life, uh, and not necessarily having what work dictate and control, um, your way of being, I think it's finding a balance and setting boundaries. It's, it really has a lot to do with that and finding a place that you can, that aligns with you. Um, mm -hmm. so they're able to do that. So I, yeah, sorry. I went on a tangent. I, I no, really no, did no. like super passionate okay. about it. <laughs> because I'm I'm listening to what you're saying and 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 I you know we go back to what your uncle mentioned and mm -hmm. honestly um even during my time growing up that was one of the things that I you know I was even kind of like told and, and that was that's in a lot of people's mindset um I would I would say you know you work you work you work and then when you get uh, at the time, I think it was 62 or 65, you can retire and then start. But mm. again, I'm real, I'm noticing a lot more people, a lot more people, a lot more younger people are like, hey, that's that's for the birds. I'm not working mm. 30, 40, 50 years to mm -hmm. retire at 70. And, and, and like you said, you may not even get to 70 and, 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 and live, you know, you retire and then two years later, you know, the, the, you're in the church laying out in the church yeah you know you know what i mean so yeah. um that's that i i totally get that um let me ask you this you, so you are a career trans transition coach and the mm -hmm. organizational psychologist mm -hmm. what are some common challenges that that people face when it comes to career transitions mm -hmm. and, and 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 what kind of I, I don't know you mentioned like there are people who are in and I've seen them too you know mm -hmm. I, I, I people come into work and I used to work with this woman and she was the most <laughs> disgruntled person you could ever want to work <laughs> with and she <laughs> I mean you see her in the morning she never had anything good to yeah. say <laughs> she never said good morning she never said good night she ne I mean she just she literally just came in because mm. she had no other cho choice, you know, and, but mm. so how do you think people get to that point? And, and, and like, mm. why is that? I mean, yeah. do, do you think is, 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 is it a lot of times the job or is it, it could be the person? Mm -mm. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start with your first question. Like the mm -hmm. common thing that I hear from folks is like, they don't believe that they have a choice. Um, and so when they are trying to, navigate a change they this is the picture and image that i get it's mm -hmm. like somebody who you know is on a whiteboard and they're drawing everything out and they're outlining everything and they are super excited about all the things they're dreaming about and then they step back and they're like they're overwhelmed with the idea of like making that a reality they mm -hmm. don't know where to start they don't know like how do i like you know create this like product how do i do this service how do i you know do this job or do that. Mm -hmm. And like, that's where a lot of people get stuck is that like, they are, uh, they get so overwhelmed with the, uh, with the, the possibility that they are, that they, that they will shelve it, that they will shelve essentially their happiness, the thing that they want to go after, yeah. the thing they want to chase, the, the thing that gives them joy, mm -hmm. um, rather than the possibility of them trying it and it not working out, which to me, I had a conversation with a friend, Theon Freeman. Y'all look him up. He's a wonderful, wonderful human being. He 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 reframed something around failure. He said that we think and imagine that failure um, is the end and that it, there's no more after that, mm -hmm. you know? But when we think about failure, um, we, we reframe that, like there is so much possibility after that. Right. Like it's not over. It is just uh, uh, the opportunity for something new after that. We've mm -hmm. discovered something. Um, and so I think that that's where, where that's the thing I, I see a lot. Um, and it's not for, it's not because of the individual person. And I don't believe that um, fully. There's sometimes people just hard headed. But I will say, um, I will say that there is, um, we've just been told a lie. Like all of us have been sold the lie that we have to do this, that, 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 that there's only one way to succeed. There's only one way to be happy. There's only one way. And it's like to have more, 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 more. Mm -hmm. um, right, right, right. Um, or other folks are just in survival mode, which I think I I get because I, you know, I grew up a <laughs> paycheck mom that hustled <laughs> paycheck to paycheck, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think it's, I think it's, it's a nuanced answer um, when it comes to folks, but I think 
I think there is, I think the thing that I keep telling people, the thing that I try and try and communicate to folks that there is, there is an option. Like mm -hmm. there is another path. There is an, there is another thing that you can do. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just work really hard to, um, help people discover that whether it's an exit strategy, whether it's, um, you know, discovering your passion, what do you value? Who are you? Sometimes people don't even give themselves space to even ask that question. Um, sometimes it is like you were told very similar to me that like you had to do this thing, right? You know, mm -hmm. you had to be a lawyer or you had to do whatever. And some people put that that idea and thought into their mind and like they've internalized it and they believe it's theirs now. Um, and and haven't given themselves space to ask, what is it that I want um, to do? Um, who am I? And I think when we start there, we're mm -hmm. actually able to open up so much, right? Like we're able to open ourselves up to possibility. And in my entrepreneurial journey, what I've tried to lean into significantly more is like, uh, you know, eight-year-old Jonathan, 10-year-old Jonathan was mm -hmm. the, who, who wasn't scared to try. He wasn't scared to experiment. Who wasn't scared to like put himself out there. Um, That's good. And I think, yeah. yeah. And I think if folks tapped into that a little bit more, um, they'd be surprised at what they find mm -hmm. um, and what excites them, what is possible. Um, yeah. And I'm, I, and I recognize I'm speaking from a very privileged perspective um, now. Uh, but I think even, even if somebody has like circumstances that are limiting, I think the other question to ask yourself is what is the one faithful step that you can take to get to where you want to go? Mm -hmm. um, and I think okay. that that's the biggest thing too. Wow. Okay. I'll stop there. I'll stop there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got soapboxes. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's okay. That's why you're here. That's why yes, you're yes. here, Jonathan. Come on, come on. Um, now you have a unique way of challenging of having challenging conversations and sparking curiosity. Yes. Um, can you provide like an example of some of these conversations and how it led to um, a transformative moment for someone you may have worked with? Yeah. I'll, uh, there's one that always comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, so I was at this like uh, racial convening um, probably seven or eight years ago. And it was at this like, uh, we got asked to go there. Me and my me and my wife got asked to go there because mm -hmm. we speak on diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff. Ooh, okay. Um, we're, we're passionate about it. Um, and we were in this like we we're in this we were in a church. We got asked to um, just be present, support like uh, the space. And um, there was a gentleman that was sitting there, and we were talking about power and how power, um, how the use of power, uh, you know. Uh, we were talking about power in a way that like was making this gentleman very mad. <laughs> he was an older white guy mm -hmm. and he, he was getting very upset. He was like, y'all are talking about, and he just outbursts. Like y'all are talking about power um, as this big negative thing. Um, he's like, you know, power like gives us the opportunity to do this. Power built this country. Power did this, yada, yada, yada. And I just like took a deep breath. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I was sitting at this table, sitting right next to me. I said, you're right. Like when power is used in a good way, it actually can create something that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It actually can protect, it can support. Right, um, right, right, right. And I said, I said, you know, I said, do you attend this church? He said, yes. I said, do y'all do good work in the, the area? Like y'all have this big old building. Do y'all do good work in the area? He said, yes. I said, do you believe that there is power there? Like you have some power because you have this building, you have money, you have all these things. He's like, yeah. So you're using power in a good way. Um, but he said, there, I said, there are people that do not care about the work that you're doing, um, that do not care about the people that you're serving. Mm -hmm. um, and I said that that is an instance of power being used in a negative way. And that's what we're talking about. And he just like, he just deflated. He didn't know what to do with that. Um, and he's just like, I never thought about it that way. And I said, of course you did it. <laughs> because you're an older white man who grew up in the suburbs and probably has a ton of power yourself. He didn't think <laughs> about it that way because that's not your perspective. But I, I just, it's just really like, 
uh, when I have conversations right like that, it's mm -hmm. it's a uh, like I don't do it like that every single time. Um, but my wife says I got so much patience. She's like, you have this wild like level of patience with people, mm -hmm. and I think it's because I'm genuinely curious. Like, how did you get to thinking what you're thinking? Because yeah. I think what you're thinking is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you're angry. I don't know why you're upset. Um, I don't know why. Um, but I'm curious as to how you got there. Uh, and I want to actually like partner with you and connect with you on a on a, a real level um, to understand where you got there. And if you are off base, then I want to show you my perspective or like learn you a little something mm -hmm. um, if I can. Um, but, but oftentimes it's really like leaning into that curiosity, um, and not meeting people with that same energy sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but I, I, I can, cause my mom, you know, my, mom, <laughs> yeah, my, my, yeah, my mama is, uh, <laughs> she, she raised, she raised three of them, um, that, mm -hmm. that don't play, but yeah. I, but I think that there is, uh, there's something that like, that is like my, I don't say weapon, but that's my tool is like that curiosity, that patience, um, uh, and that boundary. Uh, I think me keeping my cool and not meeting people sometimes when they are hostile um, or a little bit more aggressive towards me when I'm having yeah. a conversation with folks, um, it that's actually my boundary. I'm not going to take on whatever you're trying to give me right now. Um, I'm actually going to continue on having a wonderful day. Um, right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's how I've seen it. That's one example. Uh, but there's so many, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I, I know um, you, le, do you, you, do you discuss, like, I know you must discuss a lot of taboo top topics, right? How, yeah. how do you, how do you handle that? Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I think, okay. So when I like dive into like taboo, like topics, um, I, I try to like understand I try to be honest with myself about mm -hmm. what I know about the topic before I dive into it. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, I try and like, what do I know about this? Like, is this my experience? Um, have I experienced this before? Do I know somebody? Um, did I just hear this from somewhere? Um, and if I don't know nothing about it, then like, I try and catch myself when I'm trying to like chime in or chip in mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. add my two cents. Um, and ask myself, like, do I even belong in this conversation, right? Because yeah. there's some things I just don't, like, well, I don't belong in here. Um, but then it's, like, the other thing is, like, no, I actually know a little something about that. Or, like, I want to explore it in a way that, like, I want to grow in my own understanding. Um, and so on my on my podcast, uh, we talked about, one of the taboo things we talked about, taboo, is we talked about, like, Black masculinity. And it, this was that, we started having this conversation at the mm -hmm. at the at when um it was inspired by these dudes i don't want to give them press but like fit and fresh and they were having some really toxic conversations one like degrading black women and i don't play that mm -hmm. um and like having these ideas like the the alpha male or whatever and i'm like gee that is made up like it's like that's yeah. whatever you're talking about it, it sounds like you're insecure um and so i just had a bunch of like black men on the conversation uh black mm -hmm. men on my show to talk about like what is masculinity to you um what does that look like to you how do you how have you explored that for yourself mm -hmm. um because yeah, yeah, this yeah. is how i've explored it for me um and just like living in that nuance and not trying to like prove myself right or prove somebody else uh right or wrong or whatever um i try and like sit in the tension um in that level of uncomfortableness uh in like that challenge um of myself and if it's too much i like back away but i think that there's there's sometimes conversations need to be had because we have to like push against those like ne negative things that are yeah. trying to over overload our minds and stuff like that. So that was, that was one of the, that was one of the fun ones, but I also like love conversating and exploring and diving into those taboo things. Cause I'm like, oh, let's just talk about it. If we're good, let's just be serious. We're going to be serious yeah. about it. Let's just talk about it. So. Yeah. But I think we're, we, we're, we're coming into, we're in a society where a lot of times they don't want to talk about a lot of taboo things, you know, and, and mm -hmm. sometimes uh, to get knowledge or to, to make people aware, you have to, you know, yes. um, I, I'm just going to say this, uh, uh, some, uh, something, you know, um, 
one of the things that is really, you know, taboo in this society now is, you know, they don't believe some certain people don't believe there's racism. And, mm. you know, me growing up, um, uh, I can tell you, I I experienced it. You know, I I, mm. I went growing up. I lived in Brooklyn, and I was at the time bused out to a sc uh, school in Queens, and mm. it was you know it was very very. We had a lot of racism there, um, mm. and then we went to a junior high school with, with a lot of that. Um, so there there definitely is racism, but it never, and I experienced it. However. I never, uh, it never changed my view on how I perceived uh, other races or, you know, mm -hmm. I, it didn't because of what I, how, how I was treated on my brothers or my friends mm -hmm. or, or my classmates, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't, it didn't never change me because I would never say, oh, well, they're all like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because we, we I, I know it's not, you know, but mm -hmm. You know, those are those are certain topics. A lot of things are, are are taboo, and they don't want to talk about it because then they have to face the reality that it really is something is happening. Yeah. But um, what what advice do you have for? I'm I'm just gonna go back to um the career and so forth. But yeah. what advice do you have for individuals who kind of feel stuck or mm. unfulfilled in their in their current careers? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And I think it, it's so interesting because I, in my practice, in my coaching practice, I tell people that all of it's interrelated. We talk mm -hmm. about our life. We talk about the things that we experience, our stories, our work, like all of it's interrelated. And if we don't believe that, that's, we, we can go back to the example of of your old coworker who was, uh, you know, less than friendly, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but there was probably some things that th that she was carrying, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that she every single day to the workplace, right? Yeah. Um, that you know, one way or another was preventing her from experiencing some level of joy. And joy looks different for everybody. I'm not gonna, you know, joy looks different for everybody. But like, you know. So so when I say that, it's like you know, if you feel stuck or lost or not sure what's next in your career, the first thing I would ask is, or the first thing I would, I would um invite you to explore um is what are you feeling mm -hmm. you know when you think about when you think about your career when you think about your career journey where you're at right now how you got to where you are what emotions do you feel about it right um and be honest about that that experience hmm. be honest about what you're feeling i think when we are not where we want to be um or there is a i'll speak for myself when I, um, uh, there was like a good 10 years where I was just like, so confused about like what I'm doing about my, about my, my job. I, I think I was just focused on making more money, making more money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like each job that I kept getting, I kept romanticizing what this thing was going to be for me. And I didn't actually ask the question, like, is this true? Like, what do I want? Mm -hmm. Whatever. And so I just kept trying to I didn't acknowledge like I'm unhappy. I just was like, I just kept trying to fill it with something else, do something else. Just, I'll just keep going until I figure it out. Yeah. It wasn't until I paused and said, I don't like what I'm doing. I'm unhappy. Um, I'm really frustrated because mm -hmm. I'm seeing everybody around me that I graduated with um, seemingly like doing the thing that they love or are on trajectory to do the thing that they love. Right, and I right. still am not there. And I think that was the point of honesty that I had with myself where I was actually able to be like, all right, then this is what I'm feeling. Jonathan, you did the best. The second thing is you did the best you could with where mm -hmm. you were at. All right. Now what you going to do about it? What do you want to do? What do you, what do you want to see in your life? And that's the, and the, the job that as soon as I created space for myself to do that, I got the next, the next job I got was like, one that I absolutely love. Then the pandemic hit, but that's another story. But I think that there's just create space for yourself to ask the question, yeah. to be honest with yourself, to explore your emotions, to what you're feeling. Um, that's why I try and navigate with my uh, my clients on. Um, and it seems you're like, why does that have anything to do with it? Like, what is the connection there? And again, it's all interrelated, right? We carry so much emotional baggage from um, our life experiences our work experiences, mm -hmm. especially if we're, you know, 
uh, a black or brown person, a woman, you know, whatever other marginalized identity that you have, like all of the things that you've experienced day to day to day to day to day, you carry that with you, whether you recognize it or not. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so once we are honest about what we're feeling, what we're carrying emotionally, we're able to like deal with it in a way or be honest with it and have compassion for ourselves and for, you know, those experiences, whatever, um, then we're actually able to see clear, make better decisions um, and decide what we want next. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, so yeah. how do you personally de define success in your own career? Mm, that's a wonderful question. I define success now by, um, well, I have, I have two, there's two sides to that. The first side is like, I look at it through, through my values. Mm -hmm. Am I doing it? Am I in community? Am I one supporting other black people? Cause that's like my thing. Like I want to support other black people. I want to do the work that I'm doing with other black folks. Um, so like community and what am, is what I'm doing, you know, uplifting, the people that I care about that are that are in my circle, that are in my, you know, extended circle, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Like, is there having an impact outside? Um, am I joyful with what I'm doing? Um, am I my most authentic self while I'm doing it? Why you do yeah. Yeah. And then like, am I like uh am I uh taking away from other people? Um, like am I being unequitable with what I'm doing? Like, am I Am I not considering other people in, in in what I'm doing? And if all the if the thing that I'm doing or the success, quote unquote, that I had is like, oh, it's like hitting all those check, 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 then like mm -hmm. that's success to me. Okay. Um, and the other piece is, is like, you know, I, I in short, I, I see success through the lens of my values. Um, and 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 that usually steers me, steers me correctly. The other part is is like even if something's going well for me, you know, financially, you know, there's, I've got, I've had contract roles and like other contract stuff that like, and opportunities that people have come to me and, and I'm just like, I just see dollar signs. But the thing is, is like, if it negatively impacts my physical health, mental health mm -hmm. and my relation and my relationships, then that thing has to go. Right. Um, that, that can't be there. Um, because I love being physical, physically fit. And mm -hmm. like when I'm stressed or like stuff, I stop eating. I don't sleep well, all these different things. I don't go play bad. I, that's not, that's not going to work. Um, and then when my mental health is gone, I'm not in a good place. Um, cause depression is real and yeah. uh, depression for me is real. Um, and, uh, and I also love my wife. I love my, my family. I love my friends and I want to be present with them, um, right. when I'm with them. And so, right. though, so like, even if it's a successful thing, if those, those other three things are impacted, then I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm okay. That's, it's not worth it to me <laughs> personally. And, and, and uh, I, yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that. You know, yeah. I, um, I, a uh, couple of years ago, I was working for a huge um, beauty company mm. in uh, Manhattan, huge beauty, beauty company in the Empire State Building. And um it, it it just didn't help with the work life balance you know yes. i i i was coming in early and leaving really really late and um i wasn't able to see my you know my family or spend time mm. with them i was always tired mm. um and i literally wind up taking a position um a little closer to my home a lot less money but mm. I was happy, you know, I, mm -hmm. I was happy doing it because, uh, it wasn't as stressful, yep. you know, and, and, and it wasn't, um, it was, it, it allowed me to spend time with my family and, and, mm -hmm. and people that that's, what's important. You know, you, you have to realize what's important in life and, mm -hmm. and make sure that whatever you're doing, that doesn't affect it doesn't affect what's important to you because I, I, I see something on, on um, Instagram all the time. It's like uh, on social media all the time. It's, it's uh, your company or your job will, you, will have you, will have your job posted like uh, uh, the next day after you pass away or something like that. It's something like that. I think I'm, yeah. I'm paraphrasing it, but, and that's the truth, you know? Yeah. Um, 
So you, it has to be, you know, a work life. You can't just work, 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 work. It has to, it, they both have to uh, work out together because otherwise you, you, like you said, you're just working to live. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so what's next for Jonathan, Jonathan Dumas? What's, mm. what's next for you? What's, what's on yeah. the, what do you, what do you got cooking? Yeah. So, um, so I have uh, something that's called the Courage Joy uh, Roadmap that I'm working on. I'm mm -hmm. going to hopefully be rolling out an email, um, e a free email mini course. It's like over the course of five, six weeks where it um, outlines everything I'm talking about, right? Where you ask a question, you ask a great question around, you know, how does somebody get unstuck mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. And I, and that, when I talked about like feeling those emotions, being honest with your emotions, that's actually step one in my roadmap that okay. I do. And so like, uh, I'm going to be rolling that out hopefully in the next, uh, two to three weeks here. So, um, if folks want to like sign up for my email list, they can get that and get enrolled into that. Um, and then, um, I am having conversation in my, uh, with my wife and then, um, a few other people to, uh, develop potentially like a career joy retreat where we'll explore this a little bit more in depth. I'm um, mm -hmm. having some more like embodiment practices and exploring career. There'll be potentially some career coaching and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh uh but that is a dream um and hopefully we're able to do it this year but that's something that i'm like really wanting to to uh dive into because i think that there is um folks that want to experience this that want to reimagine um one what success looks like uh for themselves in mm -hmm. this season of life and yeah. then moving forward and so uh that space is just to equip folks with those tools so we're, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm playing around with that idea, but again, if you want to stay up to, to date with me, it's like the best thing to do is like connect with the, sign up for the email list. And then, um, you know, uh, the beta is going to be, you know, um, significantly cheaper than when we roll it out, like the full version. Um, so, next so what's year, so. the, well, 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 how can people, uh, get your information, put, let yeah. your website, put, let, let, let everyone know that. Yes. Okay. So, um, you can hit me up. It's, uh, uh, Hey, Jonathan, uh, Dumas.com. That's Hey, H E Y J O N A T H A N D U M A S.com. Um, and just sign up for my new newsletter there. You'll, you'll stay up to date. Promise you. I don't spam. I send like two, <laughs> one or two emails a, a, a month. Um, also LinkedIn is where I'm most active. Mm -hmm. Um, Jonathan L. Dumas, um, on there, you'll just see a tall, um, smiling black man. That's, <laughs> that's probably me. Um, you can hit me up, just say, Hey, I heard you on, you know, this podcast would love to connect or just follow me there. Um, and I host like different, like events and stuff like that once okay. a month or every other month, um, of, of equipping people. Um, because honestly my, uh, again, I operate out of abundance. And so my thing is, is like my target audience is the people is like black millennials who want to experience career joy. Mm -hmm. um, but if the message resonates with you, if you're like, I want to, I'm not, I'm not black, but I want to experience career joy. Right, I'm not right. a millennial, but I want to experience career joy. Like I'm more than happy to explore that with you um, as a coach. Um, or, you know, you could just like get some of those other resources that I have. I just, I, I honestly, my heart, heart's desire is to see people thrive. Um, and so um, I'm just thankful that I'm in a position where I'm able to do that. Um, and do it for a living. And so I just want to see other people experience the same things that I'm experiencing now. And what's your podcast? Yes. Oh my gosh. No. So my podcast is uh, highly visible and a little misunderstood. Um, you can find us literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about um, big, complex things in nuanced ways. Um, and so uh, if you liked all the jabbering I did uh, today. <laughs> Stop it. Oh my gosh. You could hear, you could hear, um, some really awesome, funny, insightful, um, conversations, um, over there. Uh, and what's the name of it again? Cause you said it really fast. Oh highly... yeah. Highly visible and a little misunderstood. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's the, that's the show. I'm, I, I'm loving it. We're about to, yeah, you can get it, find it everywhere. You, you get your podcasts. Um, and we just wrapped up a season, um, this season where we explored entrepreneuring while BIPOC. So, you know, exploring business owners and their identity. What is their identity? How does their identity, if at all, influences um, their business? And how do they- Wow, they do that? that, that's, so, that's, that's yeah. a good topic right there. Yeah. It was fun. It was really fun. There was some really, some of those conversations changed my life. I, I got to be honest. So, wow, that's yeah. an excellent topic. Yeah. Wow. So what, my last question, I promise you, what are you that's grateful for? Ah, uh, 
such a that's such a great question. I think the world is so heavy. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about this this morning um, uh, as I was waking up. I think we've experienced so much like in the last like five, 10 years, 20, it's just that there's a lot that we take mm -hmm. in all the time. And I think the resilience, perseverance, and, um, and humanity of people, I think when, just as many times as when we see people doing horrible, like horrible things, detestable things, I think that there's so many different examples of like where we could just be like thankful um, yeah. and grateful. And I'm, and I'm just grateful for that. Like there's a, this is a very simple example, but like there is a chicken in our neighborhood and I don't live in the country. It, there's a there's chicken. A chicken? And, there's a chicken just roaming our neighborhood. Oh, I don't know <laughs> if that chicken, that poor chicken fell off a transport. I don't know if somebody lost their poor chicken in our neighborhood. They got like a coop and it just got out. Um, but we named our chicken, Hey, Hey, you know, um, it's Maori for um, chicken. Um, and so uh, from Moana, if y'all recognize that, but uh, but like our neighbors, we just like started feeding the chicken. Uh, we were giving the chicken water. Um, like our neighbor upstairs, she gave us like, I, she was like, I went to the store and got some feed. Y'all want to have some feed for the chicken? So like we were outside feeding the chicken. I think that there's like these little small examples of like humanity. Yeah, uh, yeah. That like exists, even though we're seeing, you know, just horrible things in the world uh, right now. And I think that that's what the thing I'm, I'm grateful for most is like, you know, people are going to people um and do bad things but people are going yeah. to people and do incredible wonderful things and, and support each other and care for each other and so um that's what i'm grateful for long answer to a short question <laughs> it's all right it's all right jonathan it's all right yes well i i thank you so much jonathan for uh being on my podcast um and and again i learned something because I, I again i've never heard of an organization an organizational <laughs> uh psychologist and yeah. now I know what it is so now I'm like I know I know someone who can help you <laughs> yeah it's hit your boy up I, it's fine I it's know fine. someone who yes. can help you because yeah, trust yeah. me I mean you you talked about a lot of stuff that that people do you know deal with in 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 the daily um workplace you know mm -hmm. and and issues and 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 yeah I, i've seen it you, you know we've seen people come to work and they're disgruntled and mm. you know uh, that that's a lot of times i'm uh, years ago you used to hear about what was the term people going postal that is mm. i don't know if they still use that term oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah you know but yeah. um because they're so disgruntled or they're so unhappy and um, so I, I thank you and I thank you for the work that you're, you're doing, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a joy and the fact that you're helping people with their careers and, and guiding them that that's, that's so important, especially nowadays, you know, um, yeah. and I, and I, and I, I, I hope to have the, you, you back once you get that roadmap on so we can talk about that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. 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 I got like a light, a light version of that. So if anybody who subscribes to my email list, they'll get that, but it, um, uh, I'll probably invite folks later on, uh, once the mini course is done, I just got to finish writing it. Um, Definitely. uh, yeah. So yeah, if if you sign up for the email court, you know, my email list, um, I'm actually gonna be doing another workshop in. I just did my uh, free workshop where I outline all of this stuff. We explore it, body movement practices, all that stuff. So, um, no, this was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on. I love like talking about all this stuff and having conversations with wonderful people like yourself. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. You as well. Until next time, remember to embrace the journey, build lasting connections, and step boldly into all that life has in store for you. I'm your host, Sheila Dunbar. Blessings to you.